So I will give it over to Kelly for the final word. The final word. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I've gone through all of the uh, emotional terrain that is possible, right, around this experience. And uh, I've, I've sort of come to the conclusion at this point that this is a benefic assault on illusion, right? So what is unfolding here, I think, is an opportunity for each of us to truly confront all of the layers of illusion that we're still operating within, right? The illusion that the body is separate from the mind and soul, um, the illusion that we are separate from each other, that we are separate from the planet. Um, it's the atomized perspective, right? That fundamentally pits us against each other and, and leaves every man and woman for him or her self dependent on that protector that is without, right? So, so, so not inside. Um, and it's an opportunity to reclaim the human experience, right? As one that is, is fundamentally defined by beauty and, and, and love uh, and peace and safety and ease and awe and wonder. And I think we incarnated because we also want to feel things like sadness and rage and shame and learn to explore those as, as energetic signatures that inform, you know, uh, a higher level of consciousness when we learn how to work with them, right? It's, it's, it's an individuation event. And so I, I think of this as being, as I referenced earlier, like this is our collective ritual for initiation because we didn't ever have one, most of us, right? Or those of us who are struggling at this moment anyway. And, and it's, it's showing us what we can handle uh, and it's showing us where we are, are not fully claimed right? Like wh where is it that we are still kind of cowering in dependence? And I know for me, you know, I'm a decade into bodily sovereignty, you know, that, that I have unhooked myself entirely from the medical system entirely. And that's a very comfortable place for me. And in fact, it's such an easier way to live. I don't live in fear of illness or cancer or my body randomly malfunctioning at any moment. It's, I choose this belief system because it just feels better fundamentally. But there are many other blind spots that I've been operating with, even though I know better, right? So even though I know that I should be growing my own food, and, and maybe that explains why I yawn uncontrollably every time I drive to Whole Foods, right? It's like my body is telling me, this is not how you're supposed to eat and feed your family, right? Um, this is an opportunity for me to look at, you know, what is ordering on Amazon for me? Right? Is it just kind of like, ah, what's the big deal? Everybody's doing it. And, uh, you know, probably it's just part of a bigger problem. I don't have the power to fix. Or is it a choice that I'm making every single day that is contributing to the very um, reality that I then judge and condemn? Right. So, so what I've struggled with in terms of this individual individuation process is, is still getting stuck in the adolescent posture, which says, well, I'm done idealizing the government and medical system. That's for sure. But could I still get caught fighting it? Right. Like, st could I still get caught in, in the vilification of it, the flip from the, the good object to the bad object? And how can I unhook completely and allow it to be whatever it is to whomever it is that, but to understand that ultimately it's only through my consent and my participation that it has any relevance to me at all, right? So, so perhaps I don't need to fight anything. Perhaps I don't need to judge or blame and I can just see it for what it is. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think there are questions around intentionality versus unintended consequences of a different set of priorities that they have, right? I use the word they all the time these days, right? Like who is they, you know, the, the, the deep state, the elite, the Illuminati, whatever it might be. But we are, I believe, all um, participating and offering the, the energy of our consent to those persecutors, right? We're still playing the victim. And I'm interested in resolving all of the places in my personal life where I'm playing the victim. And that in, involves uh, resolving, relating to these, individuals, entities, and even their stated agendas, which are totally uh, available online. They're, they're, I think because consent is so essential, these agendas have to be known, right? If, if, if consent wasn't how we give our power away fundamentally in choice, 
then there would be far more secrets, right? But everything is, is known. It's in TED Talks and documents online and, and well revealed. Uh, that, that, you know, this is an agenda that believes that there is a place for mandated medicine. If I don't believe that, then I withdraw my consent. How do I do that? I make conscious choices in every single arena of my life where I am otherwise dependent on the same system that believes that. And, and you know, that's a huge undertaking because it really leaves us uh, with the option of earth-based living, with the option of small communities where we exchange things other than fiat currency, uh, with, with the option to really start to cohere around individuals who are, are you know, sort of looking at the world through a similar worldview while allowing others to have theirs. Because I think that's kind of the paradox of this in invitation is that an adult consciousness is how can I deeply know my own truth, one that is only mine, it's fundamentally isolating and totally individual. No one can possibly share my particular truth because it's informed by every moment of my experience um, and all of my associated traumas and you know um, blind spots. How can I own my truth and take full responsibility for everything associated with that? Only I am responsible. I can blame no one ever. I am responsible always. It feels like blaming the victim, right? But how can I own my truth and still feel connected to others who have a different truth? And I think this is possible. I, I believe that fundamentally humans are good, right? And that given the right conditions, we don't need governance. It's just that we're steeped in, in this illusion that, that we do. And part of that illusion is that there is one truth there is one medicine, right? There's, it's, it's the globalist agenda, that there is a, a mono um, experience that we are entitled to that, that renders obsolete your individual narrative, what you came here to discover, which is like who you are, right? So, so learning that there might be a paradox we can hold, which is that each of us have our own truth and we can orient around that and take full responsibility for the consequences of exercising that truth on a daily basis. I think that if we can frame it that way, that's why I've, I've put a lot of effort into framing medicine as a belief system, right? Because if we get to practice medicine according to our own beliefs, then we get to experience embodiment as we choose. And then there is no such thing as, as medical monotheism, as, as the dominant medical orthodoxy. Um, and that's also you know, why I've come to see self-care as the most radical form of activism today. It's, it's why that's what I've you know, dedicated my work to, you know, sort of uh, turning the lights on around, is that the, the ritual practices of caring for yourself and your body, of, of bringing conscious attention to all of these automated choices that you're otherwise uh, just like not quite ready to, to examine with awareness. That is how your body becomes an instrument for your truth and you can never be manipulated again because you feel it, you feel it. You don't, you don't understand it, right? You, you feel inside something's up, right? Or, or this is what I resonate with. When, when I've taught anything I've ever taught, I've never changed anyone's mind. I've potentially reminded them of what already made sense to them. And through that seeming permission that we feel we need permission to just exist in our own truth, I've potentially conferred you know, that, that sovereignty that's all I've ever done, I think, as, as a doctor. And so, you know, the, the foregrounding of self-care in this moment is so difficult uh, because we're getting sucked in um, to, to the conflict. We're getting sucked into that bracing reality of emergency that we've already been wired and attuned to as being what deserves all of our attention. And so it's like, you know, Andy was saying, it's, it's just these little choices that you're making around um, how to spend your day that, is itself a form of reclamation and, and expression of, of bodily sovereignty and personal sovereignty and civil liberties. Um, but I, I do think that what's resonated with me the most is that Bucky Fuller quote, you know, that you can't fight the existing system. You have to create a system that renders it obsolete. And so as much as I and all of us are deeply invested and interested in helping to awaken those um, because we've been charged by the priesthood, you know, with the responsibility to tell people what is true scientifically. Well, that's wonderful. But in the end, I, I've seen so many 
uh, citizen journalists and reporters figuring out for themselves. They don't need credentials and they know that they don't because your truth can only be discovered by you. You're the only one who can give yourself permission to step into your power. And so maybe it's time for us to get down to the business of creating that reality that renders the current one obsolete. Like what would that look like? And that's when I meditate every morning, that's what I focus on. It's surprisingly challenging, right? For, for me to know and just let my, my heart go wild and my imagination run wild and, and to, to allow myself to, to explore what kind of a world that I never think I could, I could be allowed to live in. Like, what would it look like? You know, would there be like drumming and dancing and, and grown food right next to the kids running around playing and, and would I not have a cell phone or a computer or, or would I, would I have any dollars in my pocket or would I just, you know, what would it look like? So if everyone can, can set to this in intention of creating that new system in their, in their heart, right? Like, what does it feel like in your heart? Um, and what does it look like in your imagination? I, I have every, every, um, you know, confidence that this will be, you know, something that we look back on as being the most profound uh, opportunity for reclamation of, of the human experience that, that we've ever been offered. Amazing. Uh, so beautifully put, you know, I love the ideas of just the personal sovereignty, you know, and having this opportunity to grow and change. And one of the hashtags I like to use is team earth and just invite the idea of what would it look like if Team USA and Team Russia and Team China all work together, all the top scientists, all the top engineers, what would it look like as a collaborative humanity? And that starts with your individual sovereignty, because if you are afraid of your neighbor, if you are afraid of a disease, if you are afraid of another country, you are not in the spirit of collaboration. You're not in the spirit of kindness or compassion. Uh, you're in fear. And so that needs that means you need to protect things. And uh, I did an interview with uh, Zuni elder uh, Clifford Mahudi and uh, David Lombert Senapas. And, you know, Clifford was just talking about, you know, the values that he was taught from these teachings. And when he listed them, what they're very simple respect for earth, right? It's very fundamental respect for your uh, neighbors, your family, your elders, all those things. They're all basic tenets that we are not living as a, as a world, if you look at it. And, anyone can look at things and say, you know what, we're probably not running the best system. We know the financial system has to crash because it's, it's built on, you know, on not a solid structure, uh, our finance, our healthcare system and all the other systems, they, they are due for huge upgrades. And when they crumble, now we have an opportunity to reimagine. And if we can first reimagine ourselves and what we want to do and how we want to collaborate, and then we move into what does that world look like and go, I was talking to Joe Martino the other day, and we were talking about go beyond the narratives that we're given, you know, it's like, would you like uh, Burger King or McDonald's? And you're thinking, well, oh, okay, well, Burger, Burger King power is getting out. Now it's, now it's the new McDonald's. And after McDonald's, it's like Wendy's, which might be slightly better or not really. I don't know. Um, you know, so how do we create this narrative as a humanity? And, ex, you know, extend our compassion to all beings, all people, all life here, you know, including the earth, including the animals, including nature, including each other, especially. So um, I love that invitation. And I think that, you know, we are all here now. Everybody on the planet is experiencing this. We're all in it together. And we have this opportunity to kind of grow up, you know, as a unit. And so I'm just hopeful that's the way that we go. And, and I do have faith. Um, that that's what will happen. And, and now we have an opportunity to build it. So uh, I'm just so grateful for you guys and your work and everything that you shared today. Um, I know I, I'm pretty sure it's Andrew Kauf, Kaufman MD is your website and Kelly Brogan MD Bearland, uh, Alpha Vedic. Do you want to chime in Andy? Oh, is that right. Uh, uh, just, to, yes, it is Andrew Kaufman MD.com. Awesome. And yeah, I just want to make sure, uh, you know, everybody just check out all of your guys' work. Um, you guys are putting out great material and, you know, there's there's so much information that you guys are putting out that is so timely and it's referenced and it's uh, well put together. So I'm just super grateful for everything that you guys are doing and uh, for your time today. So thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here, Matt. Yeah, so thanks, good. Thanks, Matt. Good to see you, Bear. Thanks, Kelly. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Andy. Okay, see you guys. Peace.